To start, click on the Expense tab to complete any expense-related transactions. To complete an expense report, navigate to Expense, Record Expenses, and Expense Reports, and click on the Create icon. Next, you'll complete the Purpose tab. The expense report date is automatically populated with the current date. If you have a role which allows you to complete an expense report for others, then you can select an employee by clicking on the magnifying glass next to the employee field. The expense report type will automatically default to the one that has been assigned to you. Enter a short description about the expense report, then select the date range of the trip. Selecting the first day of trip and last day of trip checkboxes triggers the application to calculate any per diem allowances for those days at 75%. Next, provide a detailed purpose for the expense report. When you are finished, click on the Continue button. On the Locations tab, click on the New Location button or select a saved location from the drop-down menu. If creating a new location, write a short description and complete the information under the Default Location section. The View Rate button will display the lodging and meals rates for the location. The Frequent Location checkbox can be checked if this location is used frequently for other expense reports. It will allow you to select the location from the drop-down menu in the previous screen. When finished, click on the Save button. This will take you back to the Location tab, where you can add additional locations if required. Click on the Continue button when done. Provide the charge information and default allocation percentage for the expenses. You can either type the charge name into the charge box or search for a charge by clicking the magnifying glass icon. Make sure the default allocation percentage totals 100% or you will not be able to continue. Click on the Create button when done. Note, exiting the application prior to clicking the Create button will result in losing all the entered data and you will have to start from the beginning. Click on the Add Expense button and navigate through the categories and expense types to enter your expenses. Add details as required. The next couple screens are dependent on the type of expense being entered. Simply follow the on-screen steps and click on the Continue button when finished. For this first example, we are going to enter a ground transportation expense. Fill out the Details screen as instructed, then click Continue. Complete the Amount tab by entering the expense incurred for each expense type. The screens may be different based on the type of expense. When finished, click on the Continue button. Note, the Personal field is for any amount that should not be reimbursed to you by the company. It is deducted from the expense incurred amount. In the Charge Allocations tab, select the appropriate charge type from the drop-down menu. This is where you will select whether an expense is billable, non-billable, allowable, or unallowable. The available options depend on the project and type of expense. Click on the Save button when finished. The following three steps will guide you through entering a lodging expense, which has a different layout and input options. Your first selection is between direct commercial lodging and lodging. Direct commercial lodging should only be selected when charging a commercial project where the entire build amount, including over GSA rate, is charged to a billable account number. Use lodging for all other projects. Next, complete the Detail tab. Select the location of the stay. This is important because the system will calculate allowable or unallowable rates based on the selected location. In the Expense Incurred field, enter the total lodging expense including taxes and enter the check-in and check-out dates. If you were charged an additional amount for late checkout, then select the checkbox. This will add an additional night to your expense report. The conference checkbox is very important. Selecting this box indicates that lodging expense in excess of up to 150% of the GSA rate will be allocated as allowable. This box is selected when special or unusual situations allow for you to exceed the GSA rate. 
click on the Continue button for the next screen. In the Amount tab, enter daily room rate and tax rate. If the rates are the same for multiple dates, you may use the Copy to Next Night and Copy to Remaining Nights buttons to populate the rates automatically. Selecting the checkbox next to the date being copied will make the buttons available. The expense incurred and total room and tax amounts must be equal before moving to the next screen. Click on the Continue button when finished. You will again be taken to the Charge Allocations tab and prompted to complete it as we discussed earlier. The next two steps will guide you through selecting airfare expenses that have been imported into the application. Select Airfare from the Add Expenses menu. If an airfare expense has been uploaded to your account, you will be prompted with the following screen. You have the option to move along without selecting the transaction by clicking on the Continue button, or you can choose to add the expense to the current expense report by selecting the checkbox next to the transaction and clicking on the Continue button. Additional information related to the charge is available by clicking on the transaction ID number. The subsequent screens for airfare will remain the same. The application will allow you to edit the pre-populated dates that were imported from the credit card. Complete the following screens and click Save when finished. Add any additional expenses by clicking on the Add Expenses button. To edit or delete any entered expenses, check the box next to the transaction, then click the Edit Expenses or Delete Expenses button as appropriate. Click on the Submit icon after all expenses have been entered. Note, when an admin is completing an expense report for another individual, they may submit or sign it to attach a receipt. However, the employee will receive an email from the subject, your expense report has been signed. This will notify the employee that someone else signed their expense report and they will need to review and sign over the admin signature. Managers are not to approve an employee expense report if the employee's signature is in red. The expense report will be rejected if the employee has not signed over the admin signature and will be delayed for processing. The next screen is dependent on your organization's t and setup. If you are taken to the Directed Workflow tab, click on the Assign Task icon to select the approver. Select the appropriate approver based on the project you are claiming expense for. Then click on the Update button. You will be taken back to the previous screen. Click on the Continue button. Note, if you do not see the approver, stop and contact your administrator to have the approver set up. For each expense, check the box to identify if you do or do not have a receipt. If you do not have a receipt, an explanation will be required. Enter your password and click the Submit button. Navigate to the Workflow Status section and click on the Attach icon. Upload the receipt file and then click Submit. Please note, you can only have one attachment per expense report. An expense report is routed to one or more approvers. Employees assigned to the MOX program require an approval from their supervisor and the designated approver for MOX. The application will automatically route the approval to the MOX approver after the expense report has been approved by a supervisor. The approver will receive an email notification and My Task notification to approve the expense report. In the My Desktop window, double-click on the expense report or check the box and click on the Launch button to view the report. Note, if an employee is not an MOX employee but is entering an MOX project number to the expense report, they will need to notify Finance so that they can have it approved through the MOX approval process. Employees that have an approver role also have the ability to search for expense reports that need approval. To search for an expense report, navigate to Expense, Record Expenses, and Expense Reports. Then click on the Search icon. Select your function and the group you would like to search. You may select more than one group. There are additional filters that can be applied to narrow down the search results, including employee name, expense report number, status, etc. Review the changes under the Supporting Schedules section. You can expand the section by clicking on the blue horizontal bar. You may click on the available tabs to see detail allocation information. Navigate to the Workflow Status section and click on the Approve or Reject icons. 
Rejecting will require you to provide a reason. The application will notify the employee of any rejections. There are two approval requirements, one for the expense report and one for the receipts. View the receipts by clicking on the paperclip icon to verify that all required receipts have been submitted. Note, if a submit task is highlighted in red, this indicates that someone other than the expense owner has signed the report. Approvers should not approve these expense reports until the expense owner has completed the task. If the application does not automatically display your My Expense Reports or other notification windows, you can set them up manually. From the My Desktop window, click on Edit My Desktop Layout. Select My Expense Reports from the middle panel, then click on the Move to Left panel button, then click OK. The following is an explanation of the different statuses an expense report can be assigned. Draft the expense report is started but not signed. Submitted, the expense report is signed but no approvals. Under review, some but not all approvals have occurred. Approved, all approvals are complete. Rejected, the expense report is rejected. Processed, the expense report is exported. Voided, the expense report is voided.